Libertas Academy Charter School is getting ready to open in Springfield later this year. We spoke with Modesto Montero, the young educator behind the project, and we heard about his philosophy aimed at helping every student succeed. For me, it's incredibly personal work and very urgent work. Um, I was born in Dominican Republic and I grew up very, very poor. My family made the tough choice to move to America when I was in fifth grade, so at the age of 10. And specifically, they moved to Milford, Massachusetts. Um, and I was fortunate enough that at the time, Milford, Massachusetts was a predominantly white middle class community, which meant that um, I received a, what some would say a good, if not great education, which put me on the path to college. I actually went to UMass Amherst, and that's when I realized that not every single immigrant family uh, that comes to America initially has the same story. Um, and it shook me to my core, and I wanted to get at the bottom of what is what is wrong or what what is it about our education system that isn't supporting every single student. So as a young, energetic uh, person, I joined Teach for America. Um, I did the core in Memphis, Tennessee. I became a teacher, a teacher coach, and learned a lot of, along the way. I learned that there are a lot of passionate, dedicated people in urban, in working in urban education, in public schools, uh, but fundamentally that there was something about the system itself that just wasn't providing for students the kind of education that I received. And that's when I got the crazy idea to think about what if we created a school that was more aligned with um, the type of education that I received. And um, that's why we founded Libertas Academy to ensure that our students receive a high quality education every single day so that they're prepared for college and for a life of limitless opportunities. I don't want to belabor this part, but you mentioned coming from eastern part of the state. Yes. What a great immigrant story coming to this country. But what, what brought you together? I realize the state board telling where they're going to charter, allow a charter school may have a lot to do with it, but what links Modesto Montero up with Springfield? Sure, yeah. So when I was at UMass Amherst, I worked at Holyoke Upper Bound uh, tutoring students. I started that my junior year, and that was really the catalyst for going into education. <laughs> Uh, so when I mentioned coming face to face with what, what some call the opportunity gap or the achievement gap, that's what had happened for me. And it was an eye-opening experience. Um, I was also in the Army National Guard at the time, so I used to drill out of Springfield. So even though Springfield was never my, my home, it felt like a, a significant part of my um, formative years. You talked about it a little bit in your first answer, but I was struck when I looked at the Libertas Academy website by a quote you have there, every student can and will succeed when given a rigorous college prep education. And you basically, and I'm, I'm changing a little bit, but you're basically saying no matter who they are, where they come from, their zip code, their home or family situation, you don't buy when people say, look, some kids are just going to have a tougher time and really a difficult time competing with the kid from the well-funded suburban school. Yeah, I don't at all for personal reasons, my own personal upbringing, but then also my experiences in the classroom as a teacher in a school in Memphis where we were severely underfunded. So when we talk about needing the resources to support my students didn't do that. I didn't have that. And to see the dramatic growth that they made due to the leadership um, for myself and other members of my team, it proved what is possible when we work incredibly hard, when we're smart about what supports we put in place in students, and if we don't lower the bar, that the students will meet, if not exceed our expectations. So personally, I have felt it. I have, I'm living proof of that, but I've also been able to experience that. Let's talk logistics of the actual school you're planning, grades six through nine, yes. getting started in the late summer mm -hmm. of this year, 2017. Because of our taping schedule, this will air after, but we're talking before, yeah your March 14th lottery yeah, because yeah. you have more people that want to be in your first 90 slots than you can handle. People want this in town, clearly. Yes, they do. They do. So we have been really overwhelmed by the community support, both from parents and community leaders. Um, our goal is to focus on uh, the North End, so trying to recruit students from the North End. Currently, we've had over 130 families that have applied. And as we mentioned, we only have 90 spots. Again, I think that speaks to the need, but also in conversations with families, they're hungry for a school option. They're, they're concerned about uh, potentially where their students are, are, are slotted to enroll in sixth grade. And we know that middle school is such a critical year for our students, both developmentally um, and from an academic standpoint. So absolutely. I got to ask you to comment on the argument you hear, as you know, here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts last fall, the question of lifting the cap on the number of charter schools to be allowed was on the ballot. Folks voted not to lift the cap. The argument, 
mainly by the state teachers union and many local officials was, why do we take the educational financial pie and cut it even smaller, spread it among more schools, putting it into charter schools that take away the most involved and most interesting kids and families sometimes. Don't we hurt the regular local public schools as we fund these charter schools? What do you say to all that? Yeah, I would say, I mean, it's tough, right? It is incredibly hard. And, and I hear that argument and, and, and I feel it. I was, I'm a product of a public school education, both K-12, but in, in undergrad as well. However, for us, the bottom line is there are students every single day that are not getting the education that they so rightfully deserve. And charter schools play a role in raising the bar. Right? Competition raises the bar across the board. But families are also hungry for it. And for us, it's more about ensuring that we're meeting the needs of our students and they're really responsive to our constituents, our clients, and that's our families. You're not up against some of the work rules that sometimes even teachers may not like, but they're there for a reason. What, what, what do you say to that? <laughs> I would say we are taking full advantage of that. That's exactly the reason why we exist. We know that our students need additional support, so we're going to put the supports in place. So our school will start a little bit earlier and we'll get out a little bit later. So we'll start at 7.50, students will be dismissed at 4.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday during that block. They'll receive two periods of English, two periods of math, social studies science every single day, plus multiple breaks during the day. And in the afternoon, a focus, what we call focus, which is basically tutoring one-on-one -on -one support, homework support, um, to ensure that our students are prepared every single day. So we, we understand the challenges that our students might face outside of our school. So we are doing everything in our power to support them when they're with us. I know you've worked with an organization called BES, Building Excellent Schools out of Boston. They've got support from, you were telling me, the Gates Foundation, you know, the Walton family, Walmart uh, stores supports them as well. And again, they're looking to change and improve the way American kids, especially kids who may not have had all the opportunities, are educated. And that's apparently what this school is going to be all about. That's right. That's right. So Building Excellent Schools, they're a national nonprofit, as you mentioned, based out of Boston. So they train and equip high-capacity leaders um, to open up independent charter schools all across the country. So one of the things that we do as part of the fellowship is we actually get to visit some of the highest performing charter schools from coast to coast, we get to have an opportunity to pick the brains of some of these phenomenal leaders, and that oftentimes informs the vision of our particular school. So while we're a brand new school, what we're trying to do is replicating already successful and existing models. Modesto Montero, Liber Libertas Academy Charter School, coming later this year in Springfield. Thanks for coming in, good luck, sir. Jim, thank you so much for having me, I really appreciate it.